Hi, this is Rob Adaran, and we're going to talk about how to get up and running with the Pioneer reentry device. Your minimum equipment will include a 6 French guide, a supportive 014 wire, exchange length, a Cougar wire for reentry, and a 3 or 4 millimeter long balloon, and the Pioneer device with IVIS console. You can twist the red portion to various positions to determine how far your needle will come out. And the blue portion, when pressed firmly up, will deploy the needle. But don't forget to retract it before removal. If you're not certain how far to extend the needle out, I recommend you start at setting 3 and then 5 then seven until you're successful. It is important to note that the subintimal portion may be too tight to allow passage of the Pioneer device. So for this reason, pre-dilate that area gently with a three or four millimeter balloon first and then advance your Pioneer catheter to the target area. Of course, you will be using IVIS to choose the best point of reentry. You will then deploy your needle and advance the cougar wire that you entered from the very back end of the Pioneer device and you should be able to see it move freely on angiography down the true lumen of the distal vessel. So to review, you will first load the tip of the Pioneer catheter on the 014 wire that you have down the vessel up into the subintimal space. You will then insert from the back end your exchange length cougar wire all the way towards the tip and this will be the wire that will emerge from the needle. You will position the IVIS with chromoflow on so that the true lumen is at the 12 o'clock position and the yellow arrow denotes where the needle will emerge. And you will now be in the subintimal space past the lesion able to deploy your needle and enter the true lumen distally. I'll demonstrate a case, in this case a patient who declined surgery for severe limiting left-sided claudication and left SFA occlusion you can see the reconstitution at that point. We got subintimal in the distal SFA and advanced the Pioneer catheter to the reentry point. The Cougar wire is gently advanced closer to the tip there. Ivis with chromoflow is turned on and the true lumen is rotated until it is above us at the 12 o'clock position to allow for re-entry. Now the cougar wire moves freely out into the distal lumen without any difficulty. You can now withdraw the needle and walk back the Pioneer Ivis. And I recommend as you come back to Ivis the rest of the vessel so that you can better visualize the size, the plaque, the presence of dissection. And as you can see here, it is very helpful and illuminating. Here are some representative Ivis images from our case. You can see plaque within the SFA that needs further predilation. Here you can see that we are subintimal, adjacent to the true lumen. And here we are true luminal, but there is a dissection and this needs to be dealt with. We performed aggressive predilation at the re-entry point and you can see evidence of a, a flap there 
and we continue to perform further dilations and avoided stenting. As you'll probably find out, heavily calcified occlusions increase the odds of you having to cross subintimally. Whether you go subintimal or true lumen in a case, patency rates are probably similar. Heavy calcium can also impede re-entry. Don't forget to withdraw your needle before withdrawing the device and pre-dilate the re-entry site aggressively. You may not need to use this re-entry device every day, but it is very useful to have it available just in case. The IVIS function is very helpful, and you can also use the IVIS to visualize the rest of the vessel. Thank you guys, and have a great day.